G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Time for another quick review, a very short review, hopefully under four minutes. Let's see if we can do it. I'm talking today about the TS100 soldering iron. If you live in America, it's a soldering iron, but the rest of the world, it's a soldering iron. L. See, there's an L, you say that, right. This is the nine tip version, comes in a range of versions. You can get just the box only, I think, which is the handpiece. You can get anywhere from one through to nine tips. I'm gonna show you the nine tip version because that's what they sent me. There we go. Yes, this has been sent for review, but you won't find an affiliate link in the description. Here we go, it comes in a lovely aluminum case, this version. I gather that the, the some of the cheaper versions come just in a cardboard box, but inside this aluminum case, which is really good for storing because you can throw it in your toolbox, in your flight box. You don't have to worry about losing bits. Inside here, we have all the goodness power lead, silicon power lead, very flexible, has an XD60 on one end and a barrel connector on the other, so you can plug in anywhere from a 3 to a 6 cell LiPo to power this thing, quite important, I'll talk about that in a moment. Comes with a little stand here with a little sponge you wet so you can wipe the, the crap off the end of the tips when you're using it. This is the cornerstone, this is the heart, this is the heart, but it's hard to get out, this is the intelligent controller, the handpiece. There's a 32-bit microcontroller in there, has an OLED display, it has buttons, it's not your ordinary soldering iron, it's actually an intelligent soldering iron and it is open source so you can actually reprogram it through this little micro USB on the end there. You can do some clever stuff with this that your average $9 soldering iron just isn't going to do. Uh, so let's have a look at the tips. Now like most soldering irons uh, there is a choice of tips but this comes with nine. Some of them I would never use. This is a pointed tip, a conical tip. Really, these are not much use because they're very difficult. They don't transfer heat well. So you might think, oh great, you can work on fine pieces, but no, the heat doesn't transfer. Uh, not impressed with that tip, but the rest of them are brilliant. There's a whole range of stuff. And we have things like um, a lot of truncated cone tips, which is where you have a cone. Let me see if I can find one. That's another pointed tip, so we won't use that. Here we go into here. Here is a truncated cone is what we call it. Notice here that the tip on this iron is conical but it's been cut at an angle. That flat surface gives maximum heat transfer. Brilliant. There are a lot of tips like that in here. There are also some chisel tips which is a tip where the end is got a sort of a it's angled on both sides so it becomes a chisel and that's good. Again a lot of heat transfer. These tips are brilliant and the good thing about these tips is the heating element is in each tip. So if something goes wrong and one of your tips fails you don't have to replace, or if your element fails, it's only going to be in one tip. You can basically use another tip until you buy a replacement. Brilliant, right. So that's what you get in the box. Now, uh, I'll go through the do's or the pros and cons. First of all, this is an affordable setup. Now, intelligent soldering irons, heat control soldering irons, good ones are expensive. My Hako cost me nearly $200, which is a lot of money. This is less than $200. Depending on the number of bits you buy, the price can range quite significantly. Um, it is portable. Now, my Heiko only works on the bench. This can be used in the field because it runs on a battery. Uh, and so you can take it out, you can solder up your mini quads, up your flight controls, whatever happens in the field, you can fix it with this portable kit. And it has temperature control, as I said. It's not just a dumb iron that gets too hot and melts all the flux out quickly or isn't hot enough to actually provide enough heat to do a big soldering job. This will do very small and very big. Now, it's, uh, as I say, a wide range of bits, open source. It's intelligent, it's updatable, it's lightweight and, and the cord is flexible. So this is a really lightweight iron. It makes it really easy to use, especially on the smaller stuff. It has features like a sleep mode, so that if you leave it plugged in, it won't just keep burning away at full temperature, it will automatically drop down to a lower temperature, which means that the bits will last longer. You're not gonna flatten your battery if you're using a battery. And then when you need it, it will come right up to operating temperature in a much shorter space of time. Now, power-wise, Depending on the voltage you run it on, it's anywhere from a 17 to 65 watt iron. On a three cell pack, eh, pretty okay for small jobs, but pretty marginal with 17 watts. If you want to solder up those big um, XT90 connectors, you're going to have to use a six cell pack or a 24 volt power supply to drive this thing. So, so that brings us on to the, the downsides, the, the cons of the system. It doesn't have a power supply. You can't plug it into the mains, you must have a battery or a bench supply to power this thing. So that could be an extra cost if you don't already have one of those things. Um, it's not quite as comfortable as a really well-designed bench iron, but hey, it's designed for portable use, so it's not so bad. And this handle will get hot with extended use. They say 50 to 60 degrees C, that's very hot. If you use it for 40 minutes on full power, this is gonna get really, really warm. You may not find it very comfortable to use, but that's it. In a nutshell, that is the TS100 soldering iron. Now, if you wanna see the full review, that'll be up in a day or two. 
and I'll show you it in use. I'll show you what I think of it. I will do some measurements as to what sort of power levels are going in. We'll compare it on three cells to six cells. We'll do a whole lot of tests. But in the meantime, TS100. I, first impressions are it's a really nice piece of kit. So if you've got comments, questions, anything to say, any questions you want answered in the full review, stick them in the space provided by YouTube and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching. And now I've got some other reviews to do. Bye for now. Oh, by the way, thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't. If you don't care, throw a dice and just thumb it one way or the other.